Did you know that Fort Knox is home to nearly 60% of the United States gold reserve? Fort Knox, also known as the US Bullion Depository, contains over 4,500 tons of gold. And if you take the measurement of each of these bricks, as you can see on the measurements on this source, and you stack them one on top of the other, it would exceed the height of Mount Everest. Now, this might sound like a lot of gold, but surprisingly, in today's value, a rough calculation would amount to only $298 billion. I mean, even Elon Musk had a higher net worth than this, until he decided to purchase Twitter, that is. But in the past, the vault had guarded far bigger gold deposits, and even items that were considered invaluable, like the Declaration of Independence. So in today's video, we'll be delving into the history of Fort Knox, how it manages its security, and why it still plays a very important role in finance. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please do like this video, it really helps me out. And let's get into it. So in 1933, during the Great Depression, the newly elected president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, chose a desperate action, a government monopoly on gold. His government banned the private ownership of gold, and they began to buy back the precious metal from people. After that, once his government was in possession of almost all the country's gold, Roosevelt increased the dollar rate to $35 per ounce. Gold was therefore made more valuable, about 69% more valuable overnight, and this allowed the government to inflate the money supply. However, there was a dilemma. How does one secure a thousand tons of gold that the government just collected, especially at a time when there were concerns about the start of another great war? That's where Fort Knox comes in. The Fort Knox military base was chosen as an ideal location to build a new vault to stash away all that gold. And the location was deemed as much more defensible in case of an enemy invasion compared to other coastal cities. Yet, as soon as it had been completed and commenced operations, its gold reserves would triple in size. And this was because vast quantities of gold were being shipped from Europe to the much more secure US territory, and there were a number of factors behind this. This included heightened political uncertainties in Europe and growing weapons exports from the US for which Europe traded its gold. Okay, now it's March 1941 and the Fort Knox Depository had 19,757 tons of gold secured in its vaults. In ounces, this was more than 696 million. And priced at $736 per ounce at the time, this resulted in roughly $513 billion of US money in gold value. And this was equal to almost a third of the US GDP at the time, in one single location. And in case you're curious about how much this would cost in today's value, that's about $1.3 trillion. And to guard such a treasure, the US government provided an insane amount of security. There is a reason why the term as safe as Fort Knox quickly became a metaphor for safety and security. For anyone who would want to break in, you'd find that the facility was surrounded by high steel fences with razor wires. Reportedly, these were also electrified. Beyond this, it's rumored that the grounds were littered with landmines. The facility also had lasers that would trigger automatic machine guns. And there were also a huge number of guards who would protect the facility and they were instructed to open fire on any trespassers. Now, let's say that someone somehow managed to get through all of that undetected. They would now be confronted by a two-story basement built of granite, steel, and supported by a 10-foot thick mat of concrete. And below all of that is the gold vault. The gates are 21 inches thick and they weigh about 20 tons and they're torch and drill resistant materials. Opening it requires several combinations, each dialed separately by a staff member who only knows their combination. Anyone thinking of digging their way into the vault wouldn't be successful either because the vault casing was made of 25 inch thick steel plates reinforced and enclosed by concrete. And aside from all these measures, the facility also has its own emergency water supply and power station. And to top it all off, it's adjacent to a large US military base with personnel ready to come to its defense should it be required. Now this almost sounds like a Mission Impossible movie at this point. But wait, the story gets even more ridiculous. Over the years, there's been a number of conspiracy theories and rumors spreading online that the gold in the vault actually doesn't exist. It's gone missing. 
So to counter this narrative, in 2017, the people in charge of the vault actually opened it up to the public to show that the gold was indeed there. Even senior politicians were invited to the vault to confirm that the gold was indeed not missing. This story has been fodder for conspiracy theorists for decades. So this all brings into question the importance of Fort Knox. And it really begs the question, how would the US economy actually be impacted if the gold was really missing? And the answer is not much. Here's the thing. Today, the US dollar is no longer backed by gold. Instead, its value is allowed to float freely in the market. The Fort Knox gold depository would have been more prominent when the US was still following the gold standard. But that ended in 1971 when Nixon ended the gold standard, assuring people that your dollar will be worth just as much as it is today. And we all know how that turned out. I actually made a video explaining what the gold standard is, so you can check it out over here if you're interested. So why does the Fort Knox gold facility still operate? And the former Federal Reserve Board Chairman Alan Greenspan explained it best, just in case we need it. And it makes sense. Gold is both highly liquid and it tends to hold its value rather well. If nothing else, keeping gold is an insurance policy against dire economic times. And this monetary reliability of gold is what kept it as the standard for many currencies for such a long period of time. So when it comes to the gold standard, you should know that it was not originally meant to be a monetary standard. Instead, it was the result of one man's mistake. I actually explained this story in another video that I made over here. So check it out if you haven't already. And please do subscribe to the channel for weekly videos about history and finance. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.